Good morning, everyone. It's Diane, and I'm on here just a couple of seconds early because... Good morning, everyone. I can see my, my camera flickering on my laptop, and I was hoping that that's not how it appears to you, but I think it might be. I'm not sure why, because I have the grid paper covered up. Sometimes when um, the camera sees the grid paper under here, it makes it go in and out of focus. And that's why I always put my, uh, my chipboard on top. But I don't know why the camera's flickering. Hubby gave me some new lights in my overhead light this weekend, which I thought, see, maybe it's this one. Oh, that is it. It's my, my desk light that's making it do that. Huh, isn't that just weird? Yeah, so anyways, he gave me some overhead um, lights, changed out the bulbs and stuff. <clears throat> and I can actually see now. Well, that's good. I was a little, I was a little scared because I didn't know why the camera was flickering like that. So, happy first day of November. See how much light I can get on here before it starts doing it again. I guess right about there we'll be good. Yeah, so hope everyone's well. You're um, staying busy. Yep. Busy, busy weekend. I got to work on uh, some Christmas gifts. Got quite a few things under control oh, and today we have a lot we're gonna we're gonna get started here really quick because there's a lot of techniques used in today's card um, this is the November shopping code and when you shop with me through my online store my Stampin' Up! online store, I send my customers out a thank you each month with a little sample of something in there, and that's, October's are getting ready to go. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I realized I skipped an October special, so I figured I better hurry up and figure out what November's was going to be. So when you shop with me during the month of November, and you spend $50 or more in product, you will receive a package of real red braided linen trim just in time for the holidays. So this is really pretty. It's a, a very thin braided trim. I don't want to take it out of the wrapper. I don't know if you can see in there. Not really, no. And when you order $100 or more, you'll get a roll of the braided trim as well as a pack of Genial Gems, which I believe are soft, succulent, and maybe, I meant to look that up, is that pale papaya? But um, these green gems are really pretty with the um, Eden's Garden Suite. So those are November specials. Uh, when you're shopping, this is the shopping code to add in there, and then I will be alerted that you you placed an order, and I'll be able to get your thank you out at the end of the month. All right, so today we're making, how about that? Pretty? And I even got my inside done. Remember, my new goal is to finish my insides as well as the outside of the card. So for this card we're using cork paper and these are 12 by 12 specialty sheets. Very thin. Um, I had recently learned that you could stamp directly on the cork paper and so I knew that's what I wanted to try to do with these pine cones first thing. And my pine cones are coming from Christmas season. This is a two-step stamping set where we're going to stamp the pine cone in a lighter color and then add the detail stamp over top of it with a darker color. 
It took me a while to figure out what colors I wanted to use for the pine cones. I, <laughs> I tried um, early espresso and soft suede. I tried crumb cake and soft suede. I tried um, crumb cake and cinnamon cider. Eventually I, I settled on cinnamon cider, stamped off once for the light color and then full strength for the dark color. And that's what we're gonna go with today. I kinda like the soft suede one as well. I think this was soft suede with early espresso. I'm not sure now, I tried too many. I also was going through greens. I didn't know if I wanted to use shaded spruce maybe shaded spruce stamped off once and I ended up going with um, evening evergreen. So that's kind of how I, I fiddled around and figured out what colors I wanted to use. I also was doing the cherry cobbler because there's um, there is a stamp in there that makes this little sort of like a bud type leaf and I just figured there has to be a way that those berries fit in there but I couldn't figure it out. So I guess that's not what they're meant to do. Oh, I don't know if I need that paper for any, I guess I'll keep it for scrap in case I have to. Okay, so rather than use my my leftover big sheet of cork paper, I do have a small uh, scrap here because I don't like to waste my specialty papers. Oh, see, I do need this because we're gonna stamp off. All right. So I have the large pine cone, oh my blocks are stuck, and then the large detail pine cone. Cinnamon cider ink, I wonder if I can get rid of this um, gray cardboard now. My camera's gonna go weird. It does, crap. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we're, we're working on chipboard today, okay. <clears throat> okay, cinnamon cider and my piece of cork paper and this is the large. My first layer is the lighter of the layers so I'm going to ink up my stamp, stamp it off once on scrap paper and then stamp onto my cork. Am I in frame now? now I'm worried about my lighting. And a nice little press and it is very light on the cork paper but that's okay. Our next stamping is going to add the detail to it and the cork paper itself also adds some texture. So this is the detailed part now, and I'm going to use it full strength. I need my light. Um, this does line up. If I can get my head in here. I apologize if I get it stuck under the camera. And if it doesn't line up perfect with your stamping, that's okay. Nature's not perfect either. Okay, and I'm going to set this aside for a minute. I can see that the ink is a little bit wet on here. So I'm just going to let that dry. And while it's drying, I'm going to start my front panel. For the front panel, we're going to use some of our craft paper that's out in the holiday catalog. Yeah, I don't know if it's in the regular catalog, but I like craft paper anyway. And so, I wish this would be available all season long. And my card base will be Cherry Cobbler. So I have half of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of cardstock. My corner's bent on that one. Actually, it's ripped a little. And I need to score this one then. I'll use that other piece for um, different bits. Okay. So now I have a four and a quarter by a five and a half inch card base. 
Yeah, bone folder was. I cut a piece of that craft paper at four and one eighth by five and three eighths. That'll be our front panel. And I have a scrap of my cherry cobbler also set aside to make my greeting on the front. But before we start adding anything to this, I wanted to add some background pine cones on my craft paper. And I think I'll open this up because I'm going to stamp off the edge of my paper for some of this. So for this one, I used the smaller pine cone stamp and the smaller detail stamp. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to use cinnamon cider, stamp off once, and then stamp on my cardstock. And place these wherever you think you're going to want your pine cones to be. I think I want one peeking out over here under my greeting again. And I'll put one down in the bottom right hand corner. My focal point is going to be on my bottom left hand corner of the panel. And that's where my die cut pine cone out of cork is going to go. So I just kind of want a cascading a uh, little row of pine cones here. All right, take my detail pine cone and then we're going to line these up. And if I stand up, if I can see over this better. And then you can see just by stamping that ink off one time how we've made our two shades of brown. And I was much happier with those colors than the others. I, I don't know, I, I imagine just like flowers and leaves and everything else, they could be different colors in different areas of the country, right? But our pine cones here seem to be more of a lighter brown. So I wanted my my stamped image to look like that. All right, I think I'll put my cinnamon cider away now, and let's get my evening evergreen. And I also stamped off on this. Oh, you know what? Darn it! I should have done my inside while I had my cider out. Let's grab a look at that breaking my rules already. two sheets stuck together there. I knew that felt very thick. Because I want to put, um, is that the little pine cone or the larger pine cone? I think that's the little one. Yep. So for my inside, I just have a piece of basic white, four by five and a quarter. small pine cone and small detail okay stamp off once I'm kind of just guessing where my reading is gonna go I'm pretty sure I can fit it in here it's not that huge and then the detail two-step stamp just make a world of difference okay now we can put that cinnamon cider away and move on to evening evergreen and I use this little pine looking branch 
And then doing the same thing, I stamped off once. I guess I'll do my inside and just made a little a little bed for my pine cone to be resting on and put that over here until I'm ready to do the words my fonts so <clears throat> I didn't want all of these to be really long branches because as I said my focal point is going to be down here in the corner and so the trick to that so like I want to add a little bit more of a leaf here but I don't want the whole length of the leaf so I'm going to ink up just that top part and you can use a paper towel or whatever and wipe some of the stamp off and I can stamp that off. oh didn't stamp that off very well now I can just add this down here and I did this more around the smaller pine cones on the top because I didn't want my branches to be as long as for the and I just wiped off the edge of this stamped off once And this way I can make my stamps a little bit smaller for my smaller pine cone. Kind of getting two sizes of pine boughs there with one stamp. I didn't mean to go real quiet on you there. Just kind of concentrating on my on my pine needles. Oh, that's a little. Oh, I'm on that chipboard edge. That's why. I say, why am I stamping off so crooked? That would be why. I guess I need a little bit down here on the corner so that I don't have to worry too much about wiping off because I'm pulling that corner in. Yay! Okay. So now that we have, oh no no no, we're gonna put some, we're gonna put some holly berries on there too. Um, let me see. On my original card, I did not stamp off my stem and I wish I would have so we will do that but <sighs> hmm. we kind of have to lay our card out here so that I know where my holly berries are going to be so the holly berries are probably going to have to wait for a couple of minutes let's move on now and see if our pine cone is dry on the cork paper close that up so I don't stick my hand in it much better. So we'll get our our focal point of a pine cone cut out and we will get our front greeting label cut out and then we can kind of lay our card out here and decide where those um, holly berries need to go. 
so my little pine cone die, actually the large pine cone die, and uh, let me see, did I use up all my washi? I don't want it to scoot around in my cut and emboss machine, so I'm just going to put a little bit of washi tape on here to hold it in place. And can we use the little our baby boss on this one? I think I can. The mini cut and emboss machine can cut out the same things that the large one can. It's just the size of the paper that we need to be careful of. Yep, this is going to fit because this will only allow about a um, between three and three and a half inch wide panel of paper to fit. And there's our pretty pine cone on the front. See how the cork gave it a, a little bit more dimension? So that's going to be pretty. Okay. I may as well just keep this handy because I have some extras stamped over here. I didn't want to share with you how to do it, but I have some extras because I think this also would make a nice Thanksgiving card. And so if I have time here, I'm going to do another one. Oh, you know what? Let's just cut this out. Yep. I'm going to do another one with um, different colors of paper. I think I took out soft suede and pumpkin pie. And I thought I will give that a try. And I can use a couple more Thanksgiving cards. I took all of my cards over the weekend. Well, not all of them. I took a nice big stack of them down to the land, to the shop where my cards are offered. So if you're going shopping down there at all, stop in three girls in a shop and check out some of their artists' work. And if you need to purchase a card quickly, mine are there ready for you to use. Yeah, so I took a bunch of my Thanksgiving cards down there and then I was thinking, well, that was kind of silly because I didn't keep any here for my descent of my family. So it looks like I gotta make a few more cards. That's okay. I like making cards, so makes me happy. Yep, and I opened my Etsy shop back up. I started putting some inventory in there. The hard part about this now is making sure that I don't have my cards on my Etsy shop that are down in the land because if somebody purchases one down there, I'm not going to know about it right away. And I don't want it to still be available on Etsy. So, <clears throat> So some strategic planning there. And I'm also trying to make a stack of cards, but I don't need to worry about um, Thanksgiving. And now Halloween is over for the Maker's Market at Grace Chapel Church on Small Business Saturday. So that will be um, all Christmas stuff. Okay, so good. We have some extra pine cones. Now I did also use that cherry cobbler and the dies from this set and I cut some of the berries out and I had considered using that on the front of my card but I didn't want that white outline and so decided to stamp directly on the card but our stamping all needs to be done first because we're going to dry emboss this that's why we kind of have to do everything in steps today you don't want to try to stamp after you have dry embossed your um, front panel because your stamping will come out all bumpy. So 
I'm going to heat emboss my my greeting for the front. And I'm using just an anti-static powder bag here. This is uh, Stampin' Up's Embossing Buddy, which is not available through Stampin' Up anymore, but I understand you can also get those little bags on Amazon, of course, because can't we get everything on Amazon? Pretty much. I'm using my Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. You can use this also to make like a watermark type stamp on your cards. I never have done that. I use it strictly for embossing. So I'm gonna make a nice, looks like it's all there, a nice impression on my cherry cobbler scrap. And then I'm using some white embossing powder. Making sure to tap off the excess and all of my font is covered with the powder and I don't have any little strays of embossing powder on the outer edges of it because when we heat that, any little stray remnants of that powder would heat into your cardstock. So it's safest to cover your embossing powder up before you pour your powder and safest to close your powder up before you start your heat gun. Just save yourself that little bit of aggravation. So I'll apologize right now because I'm going to heat my um, gun up here a little bit to get started and then I will bring it to the panel and we'll melt that embossing powder. So it's going to be kind of loud for a second. Close your ears or turn your volume down. Sorry about that. So you could see when the powder melted and turned to a shiny white. You can tilt your cardstock a little bit to make sure you didn't miss any little spots. And once this is cooled down, I don't want to run it through my embossing machine or my die cutting machine yet because I would flatten out my heat embossing that we just did. And then we will use our seasonal label dies, which are the ones that match our Christmas season stamp set here. And line my label die up. <clears throat> and ready to cut that out. Yeah, so we got everything going on here. We have uh, heat embossing, stamping, stamping on cork, using the new craft paper, die cutting. Of course, we're going to dry emboss here as soon as we have all of our um, stamping done on that panel. Oops, there's a little plate. All right, what am I forgetting? Nothing so far. Okay, so we need to know where we're going to lay our reading out at and my pine cone is I have this one a little bit lower than my original one my first one I think goes up much higher hmm I don't think I want it up there though I think I like it better down here 
So now I can add my, my stems and my holly berries. I think I will make one of my stems here, maybe a little sprig there, and one on the side. And I am going to stamp off one time with my Evening Evergreen because I don't want it as dark as my first one. I wish I would have moved that pine cone up a little bit further. a lot of ink on there. I'm going to put one down here. And the only reason I really, oh, that didn't even come out. It's good grief. Um, must be pressing too hard into my ink. I'm getting it all over my acrylic block and I'm not meaning to do that. Um, the only reason really that I was adding the holly berries was to bring out the cherry cobbler um, cardstock color. So I guess it's there, but by stamping off, I don't know, it's a little too dark if I don't stamp off though. Well, you can't see it if I don't, though. All right. You win. You win. I'll do it full strength, like I did my original. Right. Cherry cobbler for the fairies. And these do fit just exactly so on the stem. I'm stamping them off once as well. That'll work good. That's good. I'm happy with it. And then, while well, we have cherry cobbler out, let's stamp season's greetings on our inside panel. And because this Christmas season stamp set is an image only stamp set. I'm using my words of cheer for my front panel and for my inside message. That's where my season's greetings is coming from. I am pressing hard today. What's up? Because I'm standing up more. Usually I, I don't. I usually sit in front of my table here. cobbler up and we are safe from sticking our hands in any ink all right let's move on now that we have everything that we need for the front of our card I'm gonna use the Mary Melody embossing folder I think this craft 
paper looks really pretty when it's embossed. And for this one, I'll have to use our big boss because our embossing folder is more than three inches wide. I'm going to line my craft card stock up on the inside. You can feel um, a raised edge and then a debossed side where the impression is in the paper, in the plastic. I want my raised edge on the bottom because I want, um, well, you know what I did? The, I did the other one over on this side, which was okay, but I like the, I like that design in the embossing folder. So I think I'll move it a little bit closer to the left for this page. There is a nice line on here to line your cardstock up to make sure that you are um, even. You're straight in there. And depending on what setup you have for your cut and emboss machine, it's going to determine what layers you need to emboss. Because this is a 3D embossing folder, it's rather thick. And so I need for mine just the blue plate that I have. I'm laying my embossing folder with the folded edge going into the machine first so that when the pressure is applied to the embossing folder, it doesn't crack that edge. You see when it comes out, my folded edge came through here first. I'll move some of this out of the way so we have room again. And there's our embossed panel for the front. Cherry cobbler base. I'm going to use liquid glue on the back of this because I've added texture to my panel and I want to make sure that I have a good um, adherence to the card base. Mm -hmm, I should have pulled, there it is. I was going to say I should have pulled out my new bottle of Tombow. Almost. Doesn't take a lot of glue. This is pretty powerful stuff. And then I can line this up on the center of my card base. Just give it a second to adhere. I mean, it is only glue. For my inside, I'm not using um, textured paper, so we can just use a regular tape runner and add our insert. Greeting and our little pine cone. And I'm using dimensionals for the backs of these. And I'm using up the end of this one sheet that I have. I have so many sheets in here that I've used all of the dimensionals on. I gotta use some of this up and make room in my little container. It's overflowing. I 
use these a lot when I'm like when we were using dashing deer and or peaceful deer I guess it is and I needed some little skinny strips for the deer legs these are perfect for that because you can just cut off little tiny pieces like this and then add it to the legs and you can't see them when you stick those on the front of your car so don't throw your edge strips away from your dimensionals because they're still sticky so then after I had this all together I was kind of thinking did I want to add a bow or a ribbon or um, sorry I'm just peeling the release paper off the back um, anything like that to decorate the front of my card and I'm not really going to press this down hard yet because I'm going to lay the pine cone on there too and see if I have everything positioned the way I like it so I did make a bow out of some cherry cobbler ribbon that I had and I didn't like it on the card on my original and actually if I would have made this design up more into the center of my card I probably would have put this under my my pine cone. I may do that on another one. I hope it doesn't look too empty up here, huh? Do you think? I mean, I have this pretty embossing. So I don't know that I want to add too much more up there. I don't know. I don't think that I do. I think I like it. I really did throw myself off a little bit. My original pine cone was up just a little higher. I should have moved this one up more or made another one. I could have added another pine cone. So this is our Christmas card today using Christmas season and um, what's that other, the words, words of cheer, yes. So I think I'm going to move on and continue working and make another one with the same idea and concept here, but I think I'll do a Thanksgiving card. And I do have a pretty um, happy Thanksgiving from Banner Year, a grateful heart. Maybe I'll put that on the front with a grateful heart. Happy Thanksgiving on the inside. Huh. So let's see. So I have some pumpkin pie. Oh, and I lost my soft suede ink. How could I do that? Or did I take it out already in anticipation of pumpkin pie. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I have like three soft suede ink pads. I think they're all the old style, but I have them. Uh-huh. Sure we do. All right, well, let me get started here so I can kind of figure out what I'm going to do. So I'm cutting my cardstock at five and a half, and I'll score it at four and a quarter, just like our Christmas card was. And then I need another piece of the craft paper. All right, let's just throw everything all over the floor. Kind of. That's where we're going. Oh, I lost my craft paper too. I had the whole pack out here so I could show you how it was packaged and now I don't know where I laid it. Oh, there it is. 
problem when you start getting too many things out is then you can't find any of it. And Lord knows I am at that point four and an eight because I like a smaller border by five and three eighths. Well, that'll be pretty, okay. And I keep these because <clears throat> these also are perfect for, well, you could stamp more pine cones on that or use them for uh, cutting your labels for your greetings. I definitely keep my scraps for almost everything. Unfortunately, that makes a lot of scrap paper, but I use it. All right, um, let's see, I cut out those extra pine cones. Y'all watched me do that, there they are. So we have that ready. I don't think I had a pumpkin pie scrap. So I'll need this to put my, my greeting on. And I do need my soft wig because I can't stamp pumpkin pie on pumpkin, well I could. This isn't gonna stand out very well. There's one. One's all we need. I just have no idea where I put it. That's crazy. Oh, did I take it downstairs? I was working on some of my Christmas gifts downstairs. I could have. Okay. Although, I already have cinnamon cider in use in the pine cones. So do I want to bring in another brown? Let's just stick with cinnamon cider and see how it looks. If I don't like it, I'll change it. It's a good thing we're allowed to change our minds. I don't think I'm going to use the embossing folder, not the, not the Mary Melody one on this either. Anyways, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to make the musical background. So the same thing, I'm just going to use cinnamon cider, stamp it off once, add it to my craft paper. This time I'm going to make my pine cone up higher. Because maybe I will add a bow to this one, I'm not sure. And one down here in the corner. Detail. It's turning out to be a pretty day out there. The sky's all blue. The sunrise this morning was really pretty. That'll be nice on the orange, yeah. That'll look good. I wasn't, I was really concerned. I was thinking <clears throat> that was going to be too light. Don't need cherry cobbler. Yeah, I'm not going to add the holly berries to this one. We're just going to use, you know what? Let's see what other stamp, what other leaves we have. How about this one? Just have some, those are too big, I think. 
that's a good one. Let's see what this one looks like. I'm just trying to avoid making it look too Christmassy now because I have had the um, Christmas design on my mind. of making your stamp work for you. I have known people to cut their stamps even. I have not done that. I suppose if there was um, Oh, that'd be alright, huh? Not too Christmassy then. I suppose if there was a stamp that I really wanted a particular section of, I don't think I would be against taking my stamp apart, especially if I could put it back together when I wanted it to be a whole stamp again. My <clears throat> my greeting is probably going to fill in that that section, so I don't really have to worry about getting um, more leaves in there. That should do that, huh? We have our pine cones already cut out. my um good grief oh there I have used it that's why oh and I can use a much smaller die for this one and I think I'll swap out my white embossing powder or let's see what do we have oh I know I have a beautiful copper Need it. Copper powder. That's gonna be it. And let me get my little scrap paper. Wipe off any white that will 
that's all in there. And boy, I should have started putting some of the stuff away when I was done with it. I have all my my acrylic blocks in use. And if I don't finish up the Thanksgiving card here on camera, I will post a picture of this. I don't know why do I have my ink open up there. Shame on me. So you can see how it turns out. I'll post a picture of it on My Facebook post. Hmm. Wait, did I flip that just a little too hard? Doesn't seem to be sticking very well. I'll heat them both up, but I think I'm going to use, I think I have another versa mark in here. I might need to re-ink that one. It doesn't look very dark. Although my, my white one came out okay, huh? That one looks a little better. Oh, but I didn't use my, my buddy. My embossing buddy. Let's see how it looks. Well, while that's heating, I guess I should put my powder away. I'm going to blow it all over the craft room. tell you I'm not real happy with the way um, my powder did not stick. So it looks just like it was stamped with ink instead of embossed. So I will just have to re-ink my Versamark and do that again. And then as I said I will share that finished card with you when it's done. So there's the Christmas cards that we did today using Christmas season. So give that a give that a go and um, see what you come up with on your cards. And I'll continue working on another pine cone card for Thanksgiving. And then remember to stop by my YouTube channel on Friday for 15 minute cards and I was thinking I was going to do something different Friday, like, um, I don't know, maybe I'll get my foiling machine out and foil or something. And then next Monday, we'll be back here on Facebook for another Live at 10. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thanks for being here. Bye.